Hi, this is Shadzi and today we're going back in time to discuss one of the best and prominent figures in Judo, Aikido and Kendo history. A man that is very well-rounded, uh, academically educated and also served in the military and fought challenges and also met some of the most notorious figures of martial arts history of the 20th century. We are talking about Kenshiro Abe. Kenshiro Abe lived a very long life. He accomplished so much and his interactions with certain people that I've discussed on this channel will shed a lot more light not on Kenshiro but also the people that we already discussed and it allows us to find out a lot more uh, because it's very important to discuss all these figures because uh, it allows us to not only connect the dots but also to understand a little bit more about what kind of characters they were, what kind of men they were, if these stories told about them were true or not. Uh, it allows us to understand far more. So Kenshiro Abe's accounts and story and just life in general is filled with events and we're gonna discuss them in this video. So Kenshiro Abe was born on December 15th 1915 in the village of Tokushima uh, in the island of Shikoku Japan. He was the son of Toshizo Abe. Toshizo Abe was a headmaster and instructor in a kendo school. Uh, so just when Kenshiro was four years old uh, his father unfortunately drowned in a flood and passed away so a man by the name of Hino became a father figure in his life and he introduced him to martial arts he started with sumo and he also became a local sumo champion in his school so in 1929 at the age of 14 he started learning judo uh, under a man called Kazuhira Nakamoto a police officer uh, in just one year he was promoted to first dan and the next year he reached the second dan and the year after that he became third dan so just in three years of training he was already third dan which is crazy so this is how talented and dedicated he was um, and at the age of 16 he became the youngest student who was ever promoted to third dan and he received uh, an honorary degree from Shohei Hamano himself an instructor of the Dainippon Butokukai uh, I've talked about the Dainippon Butokukai before it is short it's also abbreviated as Butokukai and also Butoku Kuai um, this is where um, first of all the um, like a governing body for martial arts it was founded in Kyoto in the late 1890s uh, it was abolished or like fell out of favor after World War II because of its association with the Imperial Army of Japan and we all know the history of it um, but before that uh, a lot of uh, interesting things happen like uh, martial arts competition Jiu Jitsu versus Judo where it was all documented for example Mataemon Tanabe uh, when he went against the judoka Yuji Hiruka and applied the Ashigarami or the Ashihishigi and this is where he broke his uh, leg and everyone was outraged including Jigoro Kano calling for the ban of leg locks uh, etc so all of it happened in the Butoku Kai or the Dainippon Butoku Kai so it's a building or an institute with a lot of history sadly uh, with a bad association it was eventually closed down and fell out of favor in the Jap amongst the Japanese people so this is where it all happened the first second third dan etc story of uh, Kenjiro Abe it's so it's a nice parenthesis to open up because uh, the institution has a lot of history so like I said uh, Shohei Amano an instructor at the uh, Butoku Kai offered to him an honorary degree um, so he also became uh, a champion at the Tokushima High School Judo League uh, that year at the age of 16 and during his fifth year at the school Abe entered a regional uh, competition it was uh, people from 30 towns came and he served uh, as a captain of the team of Kawashima and his uh, just technique and agility and so many victories uh, earned him the nickname Pegasus if you don't know what Pegasus is it's the uh, horse, like the mythological horse with uh, wings it's like all white with huge angel wings 
that's how agile and just uh, fluid he was with his technique. So, during his first Dan exam, uh, Abe impressed a, a man called Shotaro Tobata from the Butokukai, uh, who was also uh, refereeing the event uh, that day, and uh, he suggested to Nakamoto, Abe's professor, that he should apply to the uh, Busan or the Budo Sen Mongako uh, schools. This is uh, like a college, a very high prestigious and also great for martial arts, kind of like Kozen, like Koto Sen Mongako, uh, but this one is Busan, also had martial arts, also had philosophy and a lot of uh, interesting educational programs. So the high and the elite were admitted, not just everyone there. So it was in Kyoto based and uh, he applied among 300, they would only take 20 each year and uh, Abe was uh, admitted. So he was very academically and martial art uh, and in the martial arts, very well skilled and very well rounded individual. It shows how uh, committed he is to his goals in academics and also martial arts. So let's talk about uh, his uh, training at the Busan or the Budo Sen Mongako. So in 1934, he moved to Kyoto with his mother and sisters uh, to attend the Busan and he trained in Judo and Kendo. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I would assume that the Kendo training was for his father as a tribute because like I mentioned, he lost his father at the age of four years old uh, and he was taken away from him. He drowned in a flood, which is very tragic. And he was a Kendo instructor. So I believe that he went into Kendo as a tribute for his father and to honor him. And honoring the family is very important, especially uh, in those times of humanity. So Abe learned Kendo under uh, a sword master by the name of Kinsuke uh, Ogawa. Uh, he held the rank of 10th Dan uh, Ogawa, we are talking. And uh, his instructor was 75 years old and he was still very skilled. Nobody can touch him during sparring, even the young ones. So uh, every Saturday uh, he would train Judo and Kendo as well. And he would fight against five opponents. Each round is five minutes. So 25 minutes of non-stop sparring. And he won almost all of these matches. Uh, and this was just within the first year. So even... Uh, in the first year of being admitted at the Busan, he was already winning and he was already uh, impressing his instructors so much that he was promoted to fourth dan. And the autumn of the next year, he was promoted to fifth dan. So this is crazy. And he was having almost uh, 20 uh, consecutive matches in a row, each one of five minutes. So in May of 1935, he competed in the fifth dan division championship and he defeated none other than the legendary Masahiko Kimura. Uh, Kimura recalled him as and said he was fighting like a shadow. He just cannot catch him and he was everywhere. Uh, Kimura was uh, only an inch taller than him but he was so much heavier like 30 pounds heavier or uh, 14 kilograms heavier. Abe was 71 kilograms, Kimura was 85, and still he dominated the fight. If you don't, okay, uh, let's just, uh, on a side note, this was, this was in 1935. He fought Elio, I believe, in, 19, in the early 1950s, so uh, it was almost 20 years earlier uh, than the uh, Gracie Kimura fight, so imagine how much he had evolved during those uh, almost 20 years. Uh, he was still young. Uh, I believe Kimura was born in 1917, so uh, he is two years younger than Abe. And uh, I've talked about Kimura before. He was uh, promoted very fast, very similar to Abe. Uh, so two years, he trained like crazy after that loss, Kimura. And uh, he met Abe again in Kodokan. And they were having like an open mat and free sparring. And this is where he finally beat Abe two years in 1937, but that's a side note. So while still at the uh, Busan, uh, Abe studied also philosophy and uh, he was a very good uh, student and uh, he was also uh, 
promoted to sixth dan in the Butokukai uh, in 1937, so two years after the incident with Kimura. So, as a student and as a challenger and as like a competitor, he was already accomplished, and he went and took his uh, skills to the military. So, in uh, 1937, he enlisted in the Imperial Japanese Army, which is unfortunate in my opinion because um, we all know how poor in morality and the things that they have caused uh, to the Chinese and several other countries so he was stationed in Manchuria and uh, he served there for four years during that time uh, he couldn't uh, train judo but he continued to do a kendo uh, this is where he founded his philosophy called Kyushindo it's kind of like blending and staying still and staying calm uh, a little bit like Aikido uh, you can go and read about it if you want it's called Kyushindo uh, it's a philosophy a way of living um, and he had uh, a tour of duty which ended in 1941 and he returned to Kyoto and this is where he got married uh, he did not stay at home for long because uh, World War II broke out and this is where uh, he had to go back uh, and serve the army again uh, so he was assigned uh, to be a trainer in the unit of Tokushima where he was born and he studied uh, and mastered Jukendo there uh, it was said that this is where he met uh, Morihai Ueshiba the founder of Aikido and this is where it gets uh, interesting so uh, Ueshiba was 60 years old at the time uh, and Abe was I believe 30 and according to Roger Ellis uh, and in the book Eastman in 2004 he gave the following account of their meeting um, so I read and I quote it was during a train journey in Japan that Abe first met Ueshiba Abe didn't know who he was and he reacted to Ueshiba looking at him saying what are you staring at, old man? Ueshiba replied, I know who you are, to which Abe modestly retorted, Everyone knows me. I am Kenshiro Abe, champion of all Japan. Ueshiba then introduced himself as the founder of Aikido and was told by Abe that he didn't look uh, strong enough to be a martial arts master. Ueshiba then offered Abe his little finger and said, But young man, you look very strong indeed, please break my finger. Abe at first declined but eventually accepted the challenge, presumably uh, to, shut to shut up the old man. Abe claimed that as he took hold of the old man's finger and tried to break it, he found himself on the floor of the carriage and totally immobilized. Whilst on the floor, Abe asked Ueshiba for permission to study under him. Uh, so this is the first account um, this was by Ellis in 2004 there's another one in 2006 by Morgan uh, which is a bit different so I read and I quote while traveling on a train Abe noticed an older man staring at him who then asked if he was fifth dan judo Abe replied why yes how did you know that because you have bu built of a fifth dan so who are you Kenshiro replied, everyone knows who I am. I am Kenshiro Abe, judo champion of all Japan. Yes, I can see that, the old man replied. The old man continued to talk to Kenshiro to his annoyance as he wanted to get some sleep. Eventually, the old man put a finger in Kenshiro's face. You are so powerful. Break my finger. Kenshiro was only too happy to oblige. He took the finger expecting to snap it like a twig and wham he found himself on the carriage floor under full control of the old man the old man allowed Kenshiro to get back into his seat who are you Kenshiro Abe asked I am Morihai Ueshiba the founder of Aikido Kenshiro Abe was astounded at the technique of the old man and requested that he become his student so you can see uh, these two accounts slightly differ however the ending was the same uh, I don't know my stance on this I found it a bit comical like uh, he tried to break my finger and then he found himself 
uh, on the floor with no control. Uh, he didn't uh, exactly describe how he was controlled. For example, if it was like a crucifix position of the two, you can tell it was Yoko Shiho Gatame or side control, uh, side headlock, Keza Gatame, whatever. However, they did not uh, go into details. So one might be skeptical of these accounts. First of all, they differ. And second, uh, it just sounds a bit uh, out of the ordinary. But not nonetheless it shines a light that Moriha Yueshiba was extremely cocky and extremely arrogant uh, very different from the stuff we see about him and his writings so uh, they say there is eight, uh, a, a kernel of truth in every story so uh, it might seem that Abe was cocky because well he was still young he was 30 and also he was champion and he had defeated so many people that uh, it might go to your head. One big example if, is Gordon Ryan today. So, uh, however, it does shine a lot of light on Morihei Ueshiba. Again, this story might not be true, but again, if uh, we were to take a little bit, uh, to take it with a grain of salt, as they say, uh, it does uh, differ from the Morihei Ueshiba. We know the writings, how he was extremely religious, but here he comes off as arrogant and also very challenging. Uh, if he was uh, this such a peaceful master, he wouldn't even, you know, provoke him with like, hey, break my finger. It, it seems, I don't know. Or maybe with the sheer passage of time and also how, uh, you know, Aikido people like to be called peaceful. Uh, they may have deified almost Osensei with his, uh, you know, quotes, etc. But let's not forget that he was a normal man and also he was in the army. So uh, you could expect a little bit of arrogance to his uh, accounts and stories. So uh, take what you want from these accounts uh, and also his association with the Imperial Army. So if he was that peaceful, uh, why are you associating yourself with people like the Imperial Japanese Army. So, uh, it, it gives you a lot to think about. Uh, we don't know for a fact what happened, but uh, if these accounts were 50% true, uh, it sheds, it paints Moriha Ueshiba in a very different uh, light. So, moving on. So, Abe uh, studied under Ueshiba Aikido for 10 years achieving the rank of 6th Dan or 6th degree black belt, which is enormous. Uh, during this period, uh, Abe, not only he was married, but also had two daughters. So, And in 1945, the Budoku Kai uh, ranked him 7th Dan in Judo and 6th Dan in Kendo. So 6th Dan in Judo, so, I'm sorry, 7th Dan in Judo, 6th in Aikido and 6th in Kendo. This is how, this is how much he was uh, accomplished, which is enormous uh, and World War II ended in 1945 as we know uh, Butoku Kai and Busan were closed down like I mentioned because they fell out of favor because of their association with the imperial imperialistic Japan so he became a judo teacher in Kyoto the police department and also chief instructor uh, of judo in the police so uh, he taught in also Doshisha University uh, this is where he had uh, his third daughter and also he stopped going to the Kyoto police because he wanted to have some family time and uh, during this period he felt that uh, judo in Japan was declining I don't know why and he ended his association with the Kodokan in the 1950s so uh, this is how much he was uh, also affected by the loss of the war and uh, you know, being ashamed of what the uh, Imperial Japan did, not only he stopped with the Butoku Kai thing and also closed down, but also his association with the Kodokan, which is really sad because Kodokan Judo is completely different from the Buto Dai Nippon Butoku Kai. Uh, as uh, uh, Yushijima, the uh, instructor of Kimura, also like was against, and he even did like a coup against Imperial Japan. So. This associating yourself from the Kodokan, I believe, was not 100% uh, necessary. So, after that, he felt that he needed uh, new goals. This is why he traveled to Europe 
and particularly the United Kingdom. Uh, he, this is where he went and uh, he was uh, invited by the London Judo Society and he decided to open up uh, an Aikido Society and also open up uh, the first Aikido school and uh, he, there he felt that the uh, students were very much uh, all about fighting and also uh, very disrespectful they were very cocky because keep in mind he was getting old and he was uh, teaching like young men and women so uh, he started to go through that phase of where, where's the respect etc so uh, he felt that his students did not uh, treat him well however he did uh, uh, accomplish a lot of things he founded the British Judo Council and the Aikido Council and the uh, he did invite uh, a lot of, and also uh, he taught at the Mit, uh, Mitsukuke uh, Hirada, the Shotokan uh, school. He also taught, uh, like I said, many people in, in multiple arts, uh, Kyudo, uh, Kendo, etc. So he uh, learned a lot of martial arts. Um, this is where, and also in the 1960s, he. Uh, he went through a car accident which uh, injured his neck severely and it affected his health and uh, this is where he didn't want to take chances anymore so uh, uh, he was promoted to 8th Dan still even after his disassociation he was still promoted to 8th Dan by the late 1960s um, so he added like ranks as I mentioned Judo, Aikido, Kendo and he even was ranked in 5th Dan in karate and uh, uh, kyudo and ju kendo so his whole life was just martial arts and uh, i envy this man uh, of his accomplishments and also you know his challenges and also he proved himself through you know defeating some of the best like kimura as i mentioned uh, so uh, he went back to japan he decided to go back to japan in 1964 he attended the uh, olympics in tokyo uh, and this is where uh, he met with Yueshiba again, updated him uh, on his Aikido in the UK and uh, he sent another instructor to continue his teaching on behalf of him because of his, like I said, his injuries. So uh, he, he sent Kazuo and there this is where he uh, continued to work for Abe. So in his later life, uh, there's multiple accounts, uh, not sure which one is true. Uh, but uh, they, he's, they say that in 1985, in uh, December 1st, he died of a stroke. Uh, we are not sure when or how, I'm sorry. Uh, there's a lot of conflicting accounts. Uh, the family grave... Uh, they, like I'm sorry. Uh, Robinson in 2007 uh, said that uh, there is a commemoration and even like a family grave there where he was buried. Uh, Robinson wrote, Abe was the master who introduced Kendo, uh, Aikido, Karate, Kyudo, Jukendo, Iaido, Yarido, uh, Naganitado to Europe, yet he died almost totally alone and forgotten by most, which is incredibly sad and this is why he deserves to be discussed and talked about and shared, someone to share his life story and uh, there's a lot of sources, uh, fortunately for us, um, there is, uh, for example, uh, Man with Too Many Friends. Uh, it was uh, written by uh, Morgan and Alice, uh, the one that uh, talks about uh, his uh, encounter with Ueshiba. Uh, there is also uh, uh, British Aikido History Information website you can uh, go on. There is tons of resources. You can just simply even go on the Wikipedia page and read the quotation of Morgan and Alice about the encounter with Moriha Ueshiba. So, uh, like I've mentioned, he lived an extremely long life. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, you listened throughout. If you have anything else to add about this man, please share it down below. This was Shadi and thank you for listening.